Welcome back. I'm going to be sharing how I use my MacBook Air M1 as a primary school teacher. Now, when I'm working from home, which was a while ago, when I say working from home as a, as a teacher, it's normally after hours, so on the weekends and in the evenings. First thing I have with me is a drink, probably a cup of tea, a bit of juice, water, but I need that near me. Now, you're probably wondering, it's not actually far off from my MacBook Air M1. There is a gap. I just make sure my mouse hand is here and basically I just don't knock into it. Now, I did knock it over once but because of the way I knocked into it it fell over but anyway so if you didn't know from my previous video I am a primary school teacher here in England which means I have a class full of kids and because of that I have a bit of work that I need to do particularly when I get home because my day doesn't end and indeed my working week doesn't end at the weekends. Yeah so I've got my drink over there I make sure I've got my mouse Sometimes I use it, sometimes I use the trackpad. The trackpad is so good on the MacBook Air M1. You can easily forget about any sort of Bluetooth standalone mouse that you have. It is brilliant to use. I've got something comfy underneath it. Uh, this is my uh, Jurassic Park mat and it's quite comfy. Sometimes it feels like it itches in the heat where I kind of think I might need a leather one but for now it's actually quite good and it looks quite cool as well. I don't actually need anything else in terms of marking books and that. I try to make other arrangements. I keep it away from this table but what I do do on here I use emails. Emails are just constantly going backwards and forwards. My school for instance uses uh, Google Suite so Gmail. Other schools might use Microsoft and their package as well so I get to use a Google. Now the only disadvantage with Google is I have to I'm kind of forced to use the slides and the worksheets which are okay they're not too bad but I prefer Microsoft. Now I remember when I first started teaching I did have a, a MacBook and it was absolutely useless because everything at work was Windows based and you couldn't transfer a lot of the stuff over there and the files just used to mess up and it was just an absolute pain. I can safely say from working in lockdown that is an absolute joy and much better to use than it was back in the day. I've got my Microsoft packages on there, I've got the Apple ones as well, I'm gonna be honest, numbers and pages, I don't really use them, I don't find any use for them, just because I don't need them, I've got Word. I've got the 365 software on there and that works pretty well on here when I'm doing a bit of spreadsheet, making groups, tables uh, with the kids in my class or in my year group. If I'm looking at any data, of children. Obviously I can't show you examples of actual pieces of work because this is GDPR and etc. So any work you do see me doing is probably stuff I would do but not actual data so yeah. One thing to keep in mind with the MacBook Air N1 and MacBook models in general is that you only get two USB-C ports and because of that you know teachers are going to have external drives and um, USBs. You're going to have to get a hub more than likely. Now with the MacBook Air M2 if you were to get that one obviously it has a MagSafe charge thereby leaving the two USB-C ports free. Whereas on this one, the M1 model, you if you're charging it, you've used up one slot already straight away. So it is tricky in that sense if you want to plug a few USB devices into it. Another thing to fully realise as well, as teachers, we like to download a lot of stuff off of various websites. I mean, a lot of the resources are digital. In fact, more than likely you're going to find digital resources that you will need for your classroom. Downloading them is quite easy. The way the operating system works it's as easy if not easier to use than Windows. The only reason why people find Windows easier is because they've been used to it and muscle memory and all of that but you can transfer it so much easier. And obviously another thing to mention about Mac OS is that it's super stable, at least more stable and you will you'll have less threats for viruses. The security on Mac OS is very good although Windows 11 is improving with the way they've set things up. But yeah if you want a stable environment where you have least crashes possible, I think I've only had this crash once and that was when I was compiling a movie, used up all of my eight gigabytes of RAM and I decided to do some other stuff, watch video and have tabs open, then it locked. But apart from that, as a teacher you're not going to have any of those issues. Now I have to admit I've almost been talking to you guys as if you're looking to become teachers and you're looking to get a MacBook Air in one but this can all, that's this can apply to you know, those of you who are looking to work from home or have something to work with at home, not necessarily if you're a teacher. Now, admittedly, as a teacher, most of my work is marking and assessing and planning and preparing. And a lot of that is done at school. So I don't actually bring my MacBook Air M1 to school. But when it is at home and when I have work to do on the management side of things, then I can open it up. Now, obviously, with my phone and my iPad, I can open up Gmail app and that's it straight away. But things like downloading attachments and sending files and forwarding messages 
and even setting up lessons. We use Google Classroom as well to set up a few lessons online. It becomes a bit more trickier and that's when the MacBook Air M1 makes it easier because obviously it's a fully fledged operating system. The typing experience means that I'm have a really comfortable time when I'm typing on here and I can keep going for ages. Now it's got low key travel so it's quite quiet. I did want to bring it to a place where I don't need to make, I can't make noise. It's just absolutely fantastic for that and the, it's so comfortable. It's backlit as you can see which means in the dark I can see the keys and it's just so comfortable and so good to use. Now actually during the pandemic I had to upload a lot of lessons and mark work and things like that and almost teach from the laptop. I did use a bit of Windows because of the ease of access and the transferring of files but once I got used to doing it on a MacBook it was absolutely fantastic. It was really good. It was all there in front of me and the best thing is it's fanless which means it doesn't make noise and it doesn't heat up for everything I needed to do as a primary school teacher. It was fine. It wouldn't heat up and it didn't cause me problems and I'd absolutely recommend it to anybody who is looking to be a primary school teacher and looking to get this or if you're not looking to be a primary school teacher and you want it for your work then you should go ahead and get this machine. The one thing that would be a possible downside to the MacBook Air M1 is obviously the note taking aspect in the sense that if you had an iPad it would be much smoother, much more enjoyable experience but then that's the nature of the device. You're not going to have this as a touch screen. You probably will lose that so if you brought this to meetings you'd have to type away and in meetings it will make noise so that's where I feel now. This isn't a comparison with the iPad but obviously the iPad is quite popular for students, lecturers and teachers alike and if you're looking for something for note taking I would possibly look into an iPad, the iPad Pro or the iPad Air mainly. And this is not for note taking, this is for basically everything else. As usual let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, be sure to like, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't, if you've got any questions or any. I'll do my best to respond as quick as possible and until next time. I'm now going to leave you with this shot for absolutely no reason other than the laptop looks really really cool.